Welcome to Americana Archives. Today's headline is Salt Lake Department. The subheadline says, was a member of the Donner Party. Mrs. Lucinda Clausen Dodge was a pioneer of 46. This article originally came from the Deseret News. It says, a pioneer of 46. Such a person as Mrs. Lucinda Clausen Dodge, who resides at 1331 East South Temple Street. The astonishing discovery that to her belongs this remarkable distinction was not made until yesterday. Mrs. Dodge, strange to say, has been a resident of Salt Lake City and Utah from the earliest pioneer times, though that fact was called to the attention of the Jubilee Commission only yesterday. She preceded the advance guard who blazed the way into this mountain region in 1847 by one year. When this was learned, the surprise not to say astonishment, was very great on the part of the commission officials. Mrs. Dodge, who in 1846 was seven years old, together with her father, mother, and ten brothers and sisters, preceded the ill-fated Donner Party, part of whom perished in the Sierra Nevada mountains in the winter of 1846 to 1847, on route to California. Mrs. Dodge's father was Thomas Rhodes, who left Roy County, Missouri, early in the spring of 1846. The journey across the continent to California occupied six months to the day. The Rhodes family settled in Sacramento, where Mrs. Dodge's mother died. Mr. Rhodes worked for a time in Sutter's Mill, where gold was first discovered on the Pacific coast. Mrs. Dodge, who was still a child then, went to live with a married sister for a time. There she met John Clausen, who years after in Utah became her husband. The latter was a brother of General H.B. Clausen of this city which fact made Mrs. Clausen, now Mrs. Dodge, an aunt of the Honorable Spencer Clausen, chairman of the Jubilee Commission. Mrs. Dodge returned to Utah in 1849 in charge of her father and with other members of the family, who brought a barrel of gold dust along with them. The story of the sufferings of the Donner Party, as told by Mrs. Dodge, is a most pathetic one. When they were hemmed in by the snowy depths of the Sierras, her brothers went back with others to attempt to rescue them. Some of the party they found alive, but a good many were dead. Those who were living were subsisting upon the flesh of those who had passed away. One of her own brothers perished in his attempt to save. The snow was so deep that it reached the top of the tall pines, and food had to be passed from branch to branch. The bodies of the living were carried out in a similar manner. The Rhodes brothers succeeded in rescuing 27 souls by carrying them out upon their backs. This, however, does not represent the total number saved as 48 in all were relieved from their terrible sufferings, some of them by a party sent out from California. Thomas Rhodes, Mrs. Dodge's father, died in Minersville in southern Utah in 1867 at the age of 79 years. Mrs. Dodge has three brothers and four sisters who made the memorable trip with her, now living. They are Isaac, William, and Caleb Rhodes. The two former live in California. The latter resides at Price, Utah. He is three years older than herself, and is in Salt Lake visiting the Jubilee. The Donner Party, says Whitney's history, consisted of George Donner, James F. Reed, and about 85 others, men, women, and children. In company with others, they left Missouri late in April or early in May, 1846, separating west of South Pass on the stream known as Little Sandy. The Donner Party in the latter part of July started out for Fort Bridger. Mr. Rhodes was the original leader of the party, but George Donner was elected captain of the company, which was henceforth known as the Donner Party. There they tarried four days prior to taking the Hastings Cutoff to California. This route, which was just begun to be traveled, was by way of Bear River, Echo and Weber Canyons, around the south shore of the Great Salt Lake, and across the desert to the Humboldt and the Sierras. Its projector was Lansford W. Hastings, a mountaineer and guide. With the proprietors of Fort Bridger being interested in the new road, they were doing all in their power to induce immigration that way. Mr. Reed states that some friends of his who had preceded him to California with pack animals had left letters for him with Mr. Vasquez, Bridger's partner, who advised the company to go by the way of Fort Hall and by no means to take the Hastings cutoff, but that Vasquez, as he learned later, had kept these letters, thus preventing the party from being warned. Near the mouth of Echo Canyon, they found a letter sticking in the sagebrush. It proved to be from Hastings, who was then piloting a company from Weber Canyon. It stated that if the Donner Party would send a messenger after him, he would return and guide them along a better way than the Weber, which was represented as being very difficult. Accordingly, Mr. Reed and two others, Messrs. McCutcheon and Stanton, followed and overtook Hastings near Black Rock 
at the south bend of the lake. He could not then return, but gave Mr. Reed some information concerning a cutoff, still another, from the mouth of Echo Canyon across the mountains into the Salt Lake Valley. The letter then returned to camp. The route now taken by this party was the one followed next season by the Mormon pioneers, up East Canyon over the Big and Little Mountains and down Emigration Canyon into the valley. The way was extremely difficult, and 16 days were consumed by the Donner Party in cutting a road through the canyons. Then came the crossing of the desert, where many of their cattle gave out for want of grass and water, while others were lost and stolen by the Indians, compelling them to abandon some of their wagons in the midst of the sands. Delayed by these and other misfortunes, the ill-fated company did not strike the main trail in the Humboldt until late in September. At that time, the last companies of the season had passed. Another month brought them to the foot of the Truckee Pass of the Sierras. Early snow now came, completely blocking up the way. Some of the company killed their cattle and went into winter quarters near Truckee Lake, but others hoping still to thread the pass, delayed building their cables until heavier snow fell, burying cattle, cabins, and all. It was now December. Their provisions were well nigh exhausted, and starvation stared the helpless immigrants in the face. An advance party on snowshoes pushed ahead over the mountains, braving snow and ice and wintry blasts to attain relief for their suffering companions. Before reaching New Helvetia, now Sacramento, several of the party died from cold and hunger and exhaustion, and the others, freezing and starving, were compelled to eat their flesh. Captain Sutter of Sutter's Fort near Sacramento and others near the coast, on learning of the terrible fate impending the snowbound travelers, fitted out relief parties and sent them to the rescue. This time we action saved most of the sufferers, but added the original 87, persuaded into taking this death trail across the basin. 39 perished from cold and starvation. The survivors, when found, had been subsisting for weeks, horrible extremity, upon the bodies of their dead companions. Such was the sad fate of the Donner Party. The last one rescued was a German, who became a ferocious cannibal, was picked up in April 1847. This story came from the great state of Utah, being reported in the Ogden Standard of July 23rd, 1897. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to continue to uncover all of America's lost and forgotten history, then remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.